folks are asking right now, with the, I would say, small bump in interest rates, mortgage interest rates, has that negatively impacted real estate sales? Are sales starting to slow down? Are we seeing it back off like it did in 2018 and part of 2019? So we're going to go over that and we're going to go over what to expect over the next six months. And in the meantime, you should subscribe, hit the bell so that you get alerted uh, as to uh, when these come open, because, you know, on Saturdays, you know, some people ask me, said, George, why are you so excited on Saturdays? You never used to be quite like this. And I'm like, well, you see, about a month and a half ago, my wife decided that she needed to have less caffeine. And so she was going to do tea during the week and only coffee on the weekends. Well, like a good husband, you support that. So every day, because I have this DeLonghi espresso maker, every morning when I get up and I go down, I look at it longingly. And then on Saturday, I'm like, this is not politically correct, but I'm like a, a heroin addict in my fix on Saturday and I'm so excited. And uh, so, you know, like I came in with some surgical tubing and, uh, and a needle that, well, some people would say look like a knitting needle. And she's like, what are you doing with that? And I'm like, well, I'm getting my, my cuff and my direct drive here. And of course, you know, she laughed. I had a, I was fixing her one of her pieces of equipment. But anyway, it was still funny nonetheless. So uh, yes, I get my Saturday coffee and I'm excited. Let's get on to this. Did, the, did, did mortgage rates have an effect on sales like it did in 2018, 2019? So let's rewind this a little bit. All right. So in 2017, we had this insane, crazy market, kind of like what we're going through now. Hmm, interesting. But as interest rates started to creep up, because at that point, they were like, you know, mid threes, high threes, and, you know, and it was uh, in 2017, so it was pretty crazy. Uh, but then it started to creep up, you know, into the low fours, and then the mid fours, and then, you know, buyers started backing off. And then 2019, you know, it was going, you know, mid fours, bounced up against uh, 5% a couple of times. Buyers continued to back off. And so the question is, will interest rates have a, an immediate impact on sales? Okay. The short answer is yes and no. And yes, my favorite color is plaid. I'm kidding. Yes or no. We have a massive pent up demand. We only have two months of inventory, right? But yet on the other side, yes, interest rates, you know, they're bobbling. Thursday, they were higher than they were today. Monday, they were lower than they were on Thursday. Okay, so interest rates always do this. When we watch the bonds, when we watch the mortgage-backed securities, the 10-year treasury notes, we watch those as we get more consumer confidence in the market, and then, you know, uh, the big investors start pulling out of bonds and the treasuries, which are a safe investment, Okay, and putting it back into the market, which then starts to drop the value of bonds and 10-year treasuries. Uh, interest rates are the inverse of that, right? So bond rates, mortgage-backed security rates, 10-year treasuries go down, mortgage rates start going up. It has nothing to do with the feds. A lot of people say, well, you know, the feds are going to go to negative. And I'm like, it has nothing to do with this. I mean, they're two different things. All right, so watch that. And as we run into you know, strife and whatnot. People start pulling out of the market, going into the safer funds to protect, uh, you know, all the investments. Uh, mortgage uh, interest rates start to come down. Bonds start going up. Hopefully that brings some clarity. It goes up and down like the stock market every day, okay? Uh, Dan and Juliana, you know, when we, we, we commonly laugh, you know, rates in the morning and rates in the afternoon can be two different rates entirely. Uh, so make sure that when you're quoting, uh, two different lenders that it's the same and that you're getting par pricing and that the rate that they're looking at is not paying points. All right. So month over month, uh, our inventory actually went up a little bit for sale. That is awesome. Uh, new on market went up 25.8%. Okay. So remember, March is the beginning of our spring market and it is very common for a bunch of sellers to start coming in online to get their home sold for the spring and early summer market. Totally normal. Expect that, would like to see it higher. Why? 
Immediate jump in pendant sales went up 18.1%. Solds are up 0.7% uh, month over month. And we had a pretty aggressive March. We had a pretty aggressive January. Uh, and you're going to see that here shortly. So year over year, we're still down. And remember, come May, isn't it a song? Come May, she will. Yeah, Tommy Garfunkel. Uh, anyway, so come, come May, <laughs> we're going to see this number change. But right now, we're at 56.2% lower inventory year over year, okay? So new on market is only up 0.4%, okay? Uh, it was pretty aggressive last year as we saw a bunch of folks coming on market. Uh, that was consistent with, and me will, or uh, Marie will post this, see if I get this right here. It's always funny looking at uh, the back way. Is that May? Need to come over to May. May is right there. There's May. So right where my finger is, whoop, let me get that. There we go, there's May right, nope, that's May, okay? So when we start taking a look at May numbers, that actually is going to come way down from where we were last year. Because remember, May of last year, we still had a lot of inventory. And we've been drawing it down and drawing it, drawing it down. As you can see, the light green, which is the available homes over here, and then the dark green were the sales. And notice that these have now flipped. Right? So the dark green are the number of sales which are always outperforming the light green, which is over on this side. Okay, so when we look at these numbers, this is going to change. I know I say this every week because <laughs> the funny thing is, I get asked this question still. Uh, we have like 21,000 followers sometimes, and, and I still get asked this question, so I'm bringing clarity to this. So there we go. All right. Um, pended. Pended are up 6.2% year over year. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how we start balancing when our market started to be a lot more aggressive because these numbers are going to start to change. We're going to start to see in the solds and the penny, you might even see some zero increase or, oh, we dropped down a little bit, which is not a bad thing because last year was so crazy. Solds. Solds are up 10.9%, almost 11%. Okay. Well, that's awesome. And we are starting to see an increase in momentum. Yes, we're still seeing a number of multiple offers. It's a given right now. Why? We only have two weeks of inventory <laughs> instead of four to six months of inventory, which, well, is what a balanced market is. That's what a healthy market is supposed to be. All right, let's take a look at the last seven days. The last seven days are kind of exciting to watch because again, it's going to pull into the issues that we're seeing here. So we had 1,317 homes coming on market. However, we had 1,669 come off market. And then we did uh, 1,267 sales that actually closed. Okay. Well, if you look at these numbers, you can still see we are still drawing down inventory. Even though we went 25% more homes on market month over month, it's not enough because we're still drawing down more than what is out there. So again, using the spun analogy, if, if I was to say, is the sponge dry and are we pouring water in and is it still taking it in? The answer is yes, and yes, we can pour in more water. And yes, that sponge is just still soaking it up and, and we could probably almost double our inventory coming in and then we would start to probably hit that absorption rate that we'd start to get a little bit more of a balance. I don't foresee that happening. What's this number down here? 152 sellers. What the heck? Aren't you listening? Buyers are smart. They're not, they, they, they might be aggressive, but they're not, they're not stupid. Look, if you overprice your home, your home is not gonna sell. Buyers are incredibly smart and you know, overpricing your home, whether you feel it's sentimental equity, which has zero value, or if you think, oh, buyers will pay anything today. You're crazy. That is not the case. Buyers are still incredibly smart, and you must be cognizant of where the value is at. Uh, we were having a, a conversation with the seller, and they decided to go with this other agent because they promised them fifty to $60,000 more. And of course, like last week, one of the biggest challenges last week, right? Overpricing your home. 
don't overprice your home because it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because if your home does not sell in the first seven to 10 days, you're gonna be looking at a price reduction, which puts you behind the eight ball, which means that you are now, instead of uh, having to get concessions from a buyer, you're having to give concessions to a buyer. Overpricing absolutely affects your bottom dollar and by tens of thousands of dollars, guaranteed, okay? So stop overpricing your home. Make sure that you're solid. Just because you have somebody comes in and gives you a pie in the sky price, does not mean that is the best thing to do. In fact, it's not. Why? In a limited inventory market where we have two weeks of inventory, when homes are going off, we see more homes going off market than on, why should that ever exist? That should never be, ever, ever. Okay, I got off my soapbox. All right, mortgage rates, looking at between 3.125 and 3.5 for owner occupied all depends on credit score and down payment. This is what you guys will be looking at today, right? Non owner occupied, 3.75 to 4.5. Absolutely still amazing, okay? Again, depending on credit score, down payment, those two are directly proportional to rate, all right? So if there are things that you can do to improve your credit score, it will help you save hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars every single year. Hundreds of dollars every month, thousands of dollars every year. Keep this in mind. Make sure that you are cognizant of your credit score, where your qualification is, because the biggest downfall to buyers right now are folks that are not being proactive in getting their pre-approvals uh, and then completely underwritten. That is a problem, okay? Anyway. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We love questions. We get uh, responses back every 30 minutes. Um, there's a couple of things here. I got a couple of shout outs. I'm gonna do this at the end. All right, first of all, and if you post something, I will, uh, I will copy paste that. I wanted to wish my mother a very happy 80th birthday. Congratulations. Uh, I think it's amazing. I don't know how you got to 80. I don't even know how I got to old I am. But anyway, happy birthday, mother. I just wanna wish you a very, very happy 80th, and uh, I'll be seeing you here in a little bit. Uh, the other thing is, Peter and Kasha, uh, they have an absolutely, oh my gosh, so cute, Amelia, little baby. Congratulations, I got to see her yesterday. Uh, Amelia, my heart goes out to you. I'm so glad that you took after your mother. Peter, nothing personal. <laughs> anyway, you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell, share this, it's free, share this with your friends, or you know, if somebody's looking at buying or selling, this is great information in real time. And in the meantime, I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.